Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Today we're going to take a look at converting old lightning speaker docks into having a more neutral or agnostic connector. This will allow for almost 20 years of Apple products to be fully functional with these speaker docks, including audio, charging, control buttons, and time sync. And you'll be able to do all of this for only $2. Let's get started. So Lightning speaker docks were never as prolific as their older 30-pin cousins, but in the early days of Apple's Lightning devices, all of the same major manufacturers made them. This includes Sony, Philips, JBL, Bose, and iHome. While they did fade out about halfway through Lightning's existence, there are still millions of these things around. With Apple's switch over to USB-C, perhaps you've stashed yours away in a closet or a guest room. Instead of tossing them away, wouldn't it be nice to continue to get full use of these speaker docks with Apple's newer USB-C devices? Or even go backwards in time and use them with older 30-pin iPods that predate the iPhone itself? This is a female Lightning to female USB-A adapter. It contains no circuitry and only connects the data and power lines between the two different connectors. When I first found this months ago, it wasn't available on Amazon, and I had to buy it from AliExpress, which I had never used before. The adapter was $2 and some change, and I ordered two. With shipping, the total price was a little over $7 and came from China to Indianapolis in about a week. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the economics of that. Anyway, it has since become available on Amazon where you can buy a pair for $9, but it's now even cheaper on AliExpress going for under $2. I'll put links down below, and if you're interested, you can decide which vendor works best for you. Anyway, let's test this adapter out. First, let me just address that yes, Apple has a Lightning to USB-C adapter for $29, and yes, it does work with these Lightning docks. However, it's expensive and you're still locked into USB-C. With this adapter, you can put it on and you won't be locked into USB-C. You'll have a female USB-A connection. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put an iPhone into this USB-C dock here, just so we can get a better look at it on camera. This is simply a pass-through dock. You can think of it as an extension cable. Just to be clear, you do not need this dock to work with what I'm about to show you. I just want to be able to mount the phone vertically so that we can all see it better. Okay, so I've got the USB-C to A cable plugged in here. Now, some of the Lightning docks had a feature called Time Sync, where they would actually grab the time from the Apple device and display it directly on their clock face. So when I plug in this USB-C iPhone, let's watch the clock first and see if it grabs the new time. Yep, so time sync is working. We are charging up here. Let's start a song. Music's working. Let's try some controls. The volume is going up and down on the iPhone. And we can skip tracks. So yeah, all four features are working with this adapter. Let's try it on one more lightning dock. So here I have a Philips dock and I'm just going to take the end of this USB-A cable with the adapter on it and let's plug it in and we will look for the time to change. That's working. We are charging. Let's go ahead and start up a song. That's working. Now this only has volume buttons. There's nothing else on this lightning dock, but you'll see the volume going up and down on the iPhone when I control it from the speaker dock. So all four of these features are working on this Philips lightning dock as well. Now let's go backwards in time and try this out on some old 30 pin iPods. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is how the lightning connector itself is digital only. You cannot run analog audio through a lightning connector. 
Now, not all 30-pin iPods are capable of exporting digital audio. The third generation, the mini, the fourth generation, and the photo cannot export digital audio. The first iPod that could is the first generation Nano, which came out in September of 2005, followed the next month by the fifth generation iPod or video iPod as it's sometimes known. However, these two models have some quirks. For one thing is the click wheel controls are completely locked out when you're attached to home equipment that can extract the digital audio. This is very similar to what happens when you plug an iPod into your car, if you've done that before. It goes into accessory mode, the click wheel controls are turned off, and you're supposed to use the buttons on your steering wheel or your head unit. This is happening, however, with home equipment as well with these 2005 models. Another thing is the compatibility is not very good on them. So, for the duration of this video, we're going to be testing with the second generation iPod Nano, which came out in 2006. Now, Apple tweaked the iPod accessory protocol with this model so that the click wheel controls are not locked out on home equipment that can extract digital audio, but it still is locked out in an automobile. Also, the compatibility is better. So, let's get started and try this one out. Okay, so just like with the USB-C iPhone, I'm going to use a dock here so we can mount the iPod vertically and see it better. Just to be clear, this is a pass-through dock. It's not doing anything, and it's not necessary for this experiment. So let's plug in the second generation Nano, and the first thing we'll watch for is to see if time sync is working. It is, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna darken the screen a little bit here so we can get a better look at the iPod's very bright screen. Okay, so we see it's charging up here, that's good. Let's start up a song. See the volume controls moving on screen on the iPod itself. And skipping songs works. So there we go. All four features are working on this 2006 second generation iPod Nano and this lightning dock. Let's try the Philips one real quick. Okay, so let's plug in the second gen nano to this Philips speaker. We'll take a look at the time, see if it syncs. There we go. And then I will darken the screen again. This uh, nano is very bright and it's hard to show up on camera properly. Okay, so we've got charging, that's good. Let's start up a song. Now the only controls I have on this Philips dock, like I talked about earlier in the video, is volume controls, but again, you can see the volume slider moving up and down directly on the iPod Nano. So there we go, all four features on this Philips dock as well. So I want to end this video with an appendix on little odds and ends I've discovered in experimenting with all this. At first, I was just going to do the video on this dock alone because this lightning dock has a special feature. Let me turn it around and show you what I'm talking about. It has a USB-A port on the back, and that is not just for charging. That is a fully functional USB-A port like the adapter I'm showing you in this video turns any lightning dock into. So you get time sync and audio and charging and the remote control buttons. So this is fairly unique. There's only a couple of iHome models that do this and a couple of JBLs. There's probably something else out there I missed, but for the most part, if you find a lightning dock with a USB-C port in the back, like the Philips one here, it's just charging. That's the norm if you even see that on the speaker dock. So this might be a good one to get, especially with this little adapter. You now have two neutral ports that you can plug in two different Apple devices and even switch back and forth between them. This model is the IPL8. And I will tell you that iHome made 
couple others that look just like this one that do not have that USB port on the back. And these model numbers get mangled on eBay auctions. So if you are interested in acquiring one of these, try to get a picture of the back of it to see if that USB-A port is indeed on there. So I mentioned how the 2005 models of the first generation Nano and the fifth generation iPod have some quirks and locking out the control wheels and so forth. Um, this will work on the iHome. Uh, with the locked out control wheels and you can control with the buttons here. However, if you stop and start it too many times or switch back and forth between the USB port in the back and the connector up front, it'll eventually lock up. That does not happen with the second generation Nano or anything newer. And on the Philips one, the iPod actually says accessory not supported. So while it's technically possible to get digital audio out of the 2005 models, it's clear the iPod accessory protocol was still in its infancy and there's a lot of quirks with it. You go to 2006 Nano and everything seems to be working just fine. Another thing I want to talk about is this little 30 pin to lightning adapter I featured before in my videos. It's third party, not from Apple. Um, it's a passive adapter, it only connects the data and um, power lines. You might say, well, what about this? This has been around for years, can I use this? Well, it does work in certain situations. Um, to save a quarter of a penny, they only made the lightning connector work in one direction, which is normally not a problem since the lightning cables you're supposed to put into this work in either direction. But what happens if the lightning accessory doesn't work in both directions? I'll show you. So I'll plug it into the Philips one here first. And it's working just fine, right? Now I'll put it over here in the iHome. Absolutely nothing. It's like dead in a doornail. But watch this. I'm going to put it on backwards. And it works. For this reason, I cannot recommend this connector. Also, it's limiting you to 30 pin again. So with the one I'm showing you in this video, it gives you a USB-A and you can just plug any of the devices into it. So I did want to cover it because I have used it before in videos and some of you may have seen it for sale for years on Amazon. So you can get it to work under certain circumstances, but it's not going to be perfect for everything. So the question is, how long will the old iPod accessory protocol stick around inside of the iOS devices? Here we are at the beginning of 2025. It's almost 20 years of devices that work with this, and it's still working in 18.2. I don't know. At some point, it's obviously not going to work anymore, but I couldn't guess at what year that's going to be. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video every two or three years or so forth, and we'll see if the iPod accessory protocol is in iOS 21 or something like that. So if there's interest, I will definitely revisit this in the future. The final thing I want to talk about is something some of you may have been wondering about, which is what happens if you plug in Apple's 30 pin to lightning adapter into their lightning to USB-C adapter? Can you get all of these features with the older 30 pin speaker docks? And the answer is no. These two things do not work together, which is a shame. I mean, Apple's 30 pin to lightning adapter is doing all the heavy lifting. It has the digital to analog converter chip in it. It can convert the serial connections. It's doing all of the work. Really, all that should be happening between these two adapters is connecting the data and power lines. But because Apple's lightning accessories have to authenticate with each other, they chose not to make these two things work for whatever reason. So unfortunately, that's out of the question. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. As always, if you're enjoying this channel, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon. But that's all for now. Take care.